Ray tracing is new in Revit 13, and I want to show you this as an alternative to using the render button. So what I'm going to do is begin by creating a camera view where I'm standing looking towards the patio of the house and it creates the view and I can see my, my house. Now just to show you the ray tracing option, under the visual style I can say ray trace and I'll get immediate feedback and this is really for me the main benefit of this is that I see on screen a depiction of my, my house with this, the default settings. Now what I want to do is have this as a nighttime scene, so I'm going to pick on the option that says graphic display options. I'm going to adjust the, this here so you can see this a bit better. Now that I've got my view I can close, I can close the uh, browser and make this a little bit bigger. Uh, remember that this is, a, this is updating live as I uh, uh, zoom in on it so I'm seeing the, the house in that view and it uh, starts the process every time I make a, a change so when I drag there it started the ray tracing from the beginning again but the point that I wanted to make here is that I can adjust settings and immediately get feedback as to what the consequences are so for example let me start with a background image. I could choose, you know, a sky and I can say apply and see what the sky is like. I could make a change and say I'd rather see a gradient and apply that. Um, or I could say, you know what, it's a outside view at night so why don't I take the sky color and make that dark and uh, apply that. But I'm also thinking that it's about time for uh, the sunset. So I'm going to take the horizon color and I'll pick like a orange or color, a reddish color and apply that. Uh, it's maybe a bit too much. Let's go with uh, something more like this. Apply. But I get immediate feedback. There's my sunset color. Now it still looks kind of weird in the foreground because at the moment I've got automatic exposure um, and my lighting, if I just close this down, let me change the lighting first. So under the lighting it's exterior and sun only and what I'd said I wanted to have was the interior lights. So it remains exterior because I'm outside of the building but I just want to see artificial lights only and I can say apply. Um, not quite what I want, a little too dark maybe for the building itself, although I can see the interior lights are on. So the next option would be I can come down to where it says photo photographic exposure. And the software is setting the exposure automatically, but what I, what I like about this is that I can switch to manual and I can play with the settings here to adjust the exposure. So you see that I can crank it down a little bit. Um, and, and get an idea of how it looks or I can increase the exposure up here and apply and see what I what I get. So the, the, the values here are something that I can play with and determine whether I'm getting the kind of image on screen that I want. So just looking at this, the the lights on the inside of the house are kind of blowing out the color. I can't really see much of what's going on. So I know that the higher the value was, the darker it was getting. So I'm just going to increment slowly up here until I find a, a value that shows me a bit more detail of what's going on inside the building. Maybe, uh, maybe one more. So maybe about a six something like that and then uh, I can say OK and uh, this will continue to improve as an image as long as I leave it running so just to make the point I'm going to let it run just for maybe another 30 seconds or so and then what I'm going to do is say stop this will make the save button available and then I can save the image in my project so I can, I'm going to, at that 
point I'm going to say stop, save the image in my project, and I've got my image.